Welcome, I'm Chris, we're from takingdiabeteshead-on.com. Today we're here with our peer-to-peer -peer section in which we're showing that you can do anything with your diabetes and we're bringing your everyone's hopes, wishes, dreams, their desires of diabetes and to show that diabetes is a can-do disease process. And what we're doing is asking individuals to bring their stories to help you with your diabetes. Today we're joined by Sylvia and we're joined by Kayla, who is 14 and has type 1 diabetes. Welcome, you guys. Thank you Thank for having us. Well, today, we're going to show you that you can take diabetes head on, and that's what we really want to do. Sylvia, can you tell us Kayla's story? Because it always seems that diabetes always comes through the eyes of mom. But then when we're done with this, we're going to show that diabetes also can come through the eyes of your daughter and through your daughter's eyes. And I think that's really what's important. And that's really what I think every one of our listeners really want today. So can you tell us about Kayla's story? Sure. We It was her annual routine physical. Uh -huh. And um, doctor had requested a urine specimen. And she came flying in the room saying, who was diabetic, mom or dad? And I said, neither one of us, because she found high traces of sugar in Kayla's urine. Yeah. So she did a um, AccuCheck in the doctor's office. It read high, so we had no reading. So we had to be, admit her at the hospital, and they did blood work, and her glucose at the time was 480. Wow. With no symptoms. And so you had no symptoms at all? Mm -mm. No frequent urination, no frequent thirst, none of those type of things, what, no weight loss? No. Nope. And how old were you when this happened? 11. 11. Wow. Do you have diabetes in the family? We have on both sides of the family grandparents. What, just type 2 diabetes? Type 2, and she's the first one right now. Both sides is type 1. Wow. And this was three years ago, huh? So you were 11? Yes. Wow. And I've known Sylvia for a long period of time, and I understand that um, when she first started, we talked about her insulin, and she goes, oh, it's a very small amount of insulin. And so we got to talking, and she did not have any, you, you really weren't having white swings in your blood sugars, right? No. And um, we talked about the honeymoon phase. Yes, you did. And what happened, tell our listeners what happened about, and our viewers, what happened about a year after. Right, a year after she was diagnosed, um, her sugar skyrocketed, roller coaster. We had to consult the doctor more frequently. Her, uh, we had to change doses of her medication to adjust her sugars spiking. And um, honeymoon stage was over, basically. Wow. Because I know when we talked the other day about this, you told me, you go, Chris, you're right. About after a year, our honeymoon changed. Yes, it did. So this is about a honeymoon, and you never felt like you ever even got married, right? Right. You're 14 <laughs> years old, and you're 11 at the time, so you better not have got married, huh? <laughs> no. So how are you doing with your diabetes today? I'm doing pretty good. Like before, like I was like confused and scared at the time, but now like I'm used to it. So, so you got this, huh? Yes, I got it. Really. Well, so what are you doing? How many times a day do you check your blood sugar? Like four, three, three times a day, but like mainly sometimes like four or five times a day. So you do you do a bunch then? Well, yeah. You, you're just kind of nervous now and trying to tell me only three or four, but sometimes <laughs> you do more than that. How many times does mom tell you to check a day? Well, she knows she's got to check three times before each meal. But do you guys also have a unique device, right? What do yes, you have? Yes, she has Dexcom. De Dexcom? Dexcom, yes. So what you were telling me the other day about uh, Dexcom, we've had... Uh, had to take a little break from Dexcom because you like to do what during the summertime? Swimming. Oh, so and you, what, what was the reason? Why did you have to disconnect it is, the Dexcom? It's not holding up to the water. It was not, the adhesive was not sticking onto her skin. So she's taking a break from it right now. But oh. uh, besides that, it's a wonderful device. It put me at ease, Chris. You won't so imagine. So tell me about your ease. Uh, our, our viewers really want to know about this, about Dexcom continuous glucose monitor and how it puts you at ease. It put me at ease, especially at night. Because before, my pattern was every so often, every two hours, I would wake up, hardly slept, and I would go wake her up, Kayla, how do you feel? Do you feel okay? Do you feel low? So she do that anymore? No. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> so she's a pain in the rear end, huh? So mm -hmm. and now I just get up, push the bullet button, and it gives me her reading through the whole night where she is. and. It, it's helped, helped me a lot wow. in the so, family. So three years ago, when you got the diagnosis that your daughter has diabetes, obviously she was 11, she may not have known exactly what that meant at the time. What did you think about her, her future, um, your, your hopes, wishes, dreams, desires for your daughter? What was the ori original thought that went through your mind? Um, a whole bunch of stuff because, you know, working in the medical field, I get to see a lot of these cases. Because you when, work as a phlebotomist, yes, right? Yes, in a hospital. So I get to see when patients come in there with, with a sugar spike and their lows. And I get to see all that. And all that flashed in my face. And I did, did not wish for, for her to have this or 
to happen to her or, or anything like this. So it was very hard, Chris. Wow. Very hard to accept it and why her, not me, or, you know, that situation. But we said no. It was given to us for a reason. I guess we can handle this, and we're going to take it forward from this. So you guys do this as a family, is that right, Kayla? Yes. So it's it's partially mom's diabetes too, huh? Most likely. So <laughs> mom told me she did something unique um, over this course of this time because uh, obviously eating patterns have changed and different things. And what successes have you had because of Kayla's diabetes? My success was that I was uh, very overweight four years ago, and I took it upon myself that day that she was diagnosed that um, if she has to watch what she eats, mm -hmm. her mother could do the same thing. So. so it changed the whole family. I have lost a tremendous amount of weight. Wow. And um, it changes to how we eat, what we eat, when we eat. Wow. And a lot of exercise in it now. So, so you, you kind of help mom, huh? Yeah. So this is, you know, some people say that diabetes, when you end up with diabetes in your household, it's a love-hate relationship. Um, in a lot of ways, um, you, there, what, what is there to love about diabetes? Well, I would tell you that what you're saying, you've lost weight, the family's changed, the family's become healthier, so that's something to love, but obviously you hate the way that diabetes comes upon you suddenly yes. in your family. And being 11 years of age, you were the same age uh, getting diabetes as Teresa, my wife, who co-hosted us here on uh, Taking Diabetes Head On. And um, how, how, would, how have you felt, and what do you do to control your diabetes today? What type of medicine are you on? I'm on Novolog. Uh-huh. And Trisibia. Trisibia. And Trisibia. <laughs> so you take long-acting Trisibia and you take Novolog. Novolog. And how are you doing with those numbers? What's, what's your last day one C? Do you know what your last day one C was? Um, it was, we went to a, uh, which actually she's due for her appointment tomorrow. So three months ago, her A1C was 7.3. Wow, so you're doing good. Do you have money highs or lows? Mm, not really. No. Low, like lows, yes, but highs, not. Wow. And so with that being said, tell us about diabetes and tell our listeners and our viewers about diabetes and what you think that they can do or learn from you. Here you're 14 years of age and you're taking diabetes head on. So what is it that, that you could tell somebody to uh, help your peers? I would tell someone to not be scared and like just um, watch what you're eating and like don't... Um, so, so don't stress over it maybe? Yeah, like don't stress, like don't like stress over like... How, how do you not stress when you have a mom that stresses <laughs> over it? I don't know. I you don't stress know? a lot, yeah. You stress yeah. a lot? And so tell your mom what you think about diabetes. You know, we, we heard what diabetes is to your mom. How about your hopes, wishes, dreams, and desires for your future? Is there anything that you worry about? Anything that you, or you just say, I, I got this, I'm not worried, I can do this, I can take diabetes head on? Well, I'm not worried. Like, I'm well, that's like, excellent. That's, so so what, what type of, what, what's your, your feelings? How does it make you feel? I feel, I feel like fine. I don't like... I feel good about like what I have and that you can do forward can you can take do. take it forward and it's not going to hold you back mm -hmm. you're ambitious she wants to be a school teacher well wow. yeah you're, you're right diabetes is a can-do disease process and there's nothing about diabetes that should make you not be able to do anything with diabetes so do you and your mom uh, do you guys fight sometimes about the way you want to take care of diabetes and what she wants you to do no no, I just no. have to remind her a couple of times, Kayla, have you done this? Have you done that? You know, she's 14. So sometimes parents become this thing called a helicopter parent where they hover a little too much. Has mom become that? Well, yes, but like, no. Like, I, I get that she's like, war like, she's on top of me. I'm like, make sure, making sure that I'm like healthy and safe. But that's so. So it's actually a blessing to have that, huh? Yes. Even though sometimes some kids think, "Oh my God, if my parent would just leave me alone, I do okay." <laughs> so you you think this is just a benefit for you then, huh? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, excellent. And so you swim and you have the Dexcom, but you've taken it off during this the season of, yeah. of swimming. And um, so what are you doing? Are you stressing mom at night since you don't have the uh, CGM to go push the button? Not like I was before. Before, my hours have been changed at work, so I go a little bit earlier. So I still check her before I go. Mm -hmm. And I have dad check her before he goes to work to make sure she's okay. And we hear how parents are helping you. How much have you taken on yourself? And have you taken this thing head on? 
how much. Uh, are you doing most all your blood sugar checks? Are you giving yourself your own insulin? Yes, I check every single time before I eat, and I do give myself insulin. You do, and you know how to carbohydrate count? Yes. And you've been successful. Mm -hmm. Have you had any major lows or major highs since you've been diagnosed? Major lows, yeah, and highs, yeah. Okay, yes. and how are you doing with those? I'm doing pretty good. I know what to do. So like, if I'm low, I drink some juice or I have some tablets that I have there. Or highs, I know I have to give myself correction. So, so you're learning quite well. Yes, yes. And so the family, how about I know that you have a little brother at home. Has he learned how to uh, help with your diabetes? Yes, he has. He's helped her when she has to give her a shot in her arm. He'll help her hold her arm. Or And how about your girlfriends and those? Do they ever ask you about diabetes and what it means to have diabetes? Have you divulged it to them? Do you have a diabetes buddy or a friend that really knows that you have diabetes or maybe a friend that has diabetes and that you hang out with? Well, I don't have a friend that I have diabetes, but like I go to a nurse's office and I have like nurses like I have like a health office friends like I had diabetes but like my friends they all know that I had diabetes and I tell them like just in case of like if I pass out I tell them what they need to do and like they all they all worry about me like say that I go to the nurse's office and I don't come to lunch early with them they always text me like where are you at what happened and so so, so you kind of in a lot of ways you you've had friends that really show their their compassion yes and and they actually care about you and and you know who your really friends are yeah so Kayla, you said that you have your friends in the nurse's office, etc., but you don't really have a diabetes buddy or a friend with diabetes. You know, I think that we have touched upon that and feeling alone with diabetes isn't something you want to do. Although you have an awesome mom and dad and brother, I think that maybe meeting others with diabetes. So sometimes diabetes support groups are awesome. There's a diabetes support group in any one community, no matter where you are in the country. That's one. Camps. Have you ever thought about camps? No, so camp might be something you guys might want to think about because when you are around your other peers, that's why this program is so successful because we bring your peers to you because just like how you might feel alone not having a diabetes friend or somebody who has diabetes other than the people that know like you have other friends but you don't have that diabetes friend and we don't want you to go through life not having a diabetes friend for crying out loud you really need to have somebody, somebody. Who, who really understands this not mom not dad not your doctor but somebody who's your age just like you who says wow, you know what, we got this, we can take this thing head on. And so camp may be something that you might want to look at um, so that you can meet others. And then there's others, sometimes part of camping organizations, they have other meet and greets throughout the years, no matter where you are in the country, you can find these, these meetups, diabetes meetups with, with teenagers. And I think that's important. And another thing, because I know my wife's going to ask me this, do you got a boyfriend yet? Well, I have, but no, not right now. Oh, mom, mom's, <laughs> mom's pinching you. Is she pinching you under the yeah. table? So, so you have, you, you, you have, you're interested in the boys. Yeah. So what happens when you, uh, what, what's your plan? Do you have a plan to tell them or, or any of those type of things that, hey, you know what, if you're going to like me, you got to like my sensor or my pump or my pen um, because you got to take me full. And that's what, uh, that's what you have to tell them. Have you thought about that? Or have you guys, your mom talked about this? I'm not as good as this because I'm a, a dad and, you know, if it was up to me and you're 14, you told me you even think you're looking at a boy, I'd give you that double eye and uh, evil eye and it would burn right through. And the boy, any boy that comes by, he would just, like, blow up. But she was dating a little boy, not, and he did ask her, was it contagious? And of course, he said, "No, it's not." Oh, you know what? He's lucky he didn't meet me because I would have told him, "This thing's contagious. You got to run as far as you can." Did you kiss my daughter? That's a big good I would say. And then he'd be running away. So you're lucky I'm not your dad, huh? Mm -hmm. So, well, so, dad doesn't even know. He'll find out after today. <laughs> dad, guess what you just learned? Kayla has a boyfriend. Well, had or a she's boyfriend. an interesting voice, and mom kept it from you. Yes, I did. <laughs> not, not the best thing, huh? No. So she's your um. She's your uh, person that gets you in trouble a little, huh? <laughs> she helps you keep secrets? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, but anyway, with, with that being said, I think that maybe that's something, I don't know if you guys have talked about that, but, you know, you're going to meet a boy in the future. You're going to have friends. You're going to meet others with diabetes. And I think just really incorporating, I think part of incorporating diabetes into who you are, yes. and it, it doesn't have to define you. 
And diabetes should never define anybody, but it is part of you. And I yes. think with that being said, you can incorporate it into your life. And the more you incorporate diabetes in your life, I think that the better you'll be. What do you think? Um, I think that... Um, by telling people you have it. Oh, by... Oh, yeah. yeah, I forgot. I, I tell... Okay, before I meet someone or something, I tell them before, like, I start talking to them that I have diabetes, just saying, like, if, is it okay that I have diabetes? And... Yes, some people ask me like, what is it, or like, is it contagious, or like, is it like, can you die from it? Or I just tell them like, it's not contagious. If you don't take care of yourself, if you don't take care of yourself, you can get yeah. very yeah. ill. You know, I, I think that you guys are, are doing a good job. You're taking this on together. Um, she looks like a mini you. Uh, <laughs> so she's your mini me. Yes. Uh, and the good thing is, um, for just a few more years, um, she will look at you for her words that she wants to say. Yeah. So don't ever be ashamed of that. Um, then later, as mom gets older and you're older, you'll be putting words in mom's mouth. She won't know what to say, and you, you'll just answer every question for her. So <laughs> it all turns around. Uh, so right now she puts words in your mouth but later you're gonna do the same for her so don't worry so what do you guys what, what else do you guys have to say anything else regarding this friend stuff or boyfriend stuff or no just that she'll be okay and it's part of life and um, we're we're doing good with it I yeah we are doing good excellent. we are so excellent and you do you <laughs> feel alone with diabetes no I don't feel alone with diabetes no. Do you think you'd be better if you did meet somebody, uh, a peer or somebody that had the, the you know, same age, has same hopes, wishes, desires, etc., and then you find out that they have diabetes, do you think you'll hit it off with them? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. You think maybe you might consider camp or those diabetes meet and greet, diabetes meet up type things? Uh, yeah, that would be great. Some of those mm -hmm. maybe teen groups? Yeah. That might be something when you guys yeah, are, You know, I don't know how she feels when she's feeling low or she's feeling high and she can relate to other people oh. I can just tell her what to do what she has to do but I'm not in her body I don't know the symptoms how she feels yeah. Chris and those are some things that maybe over time you can tell mom exactly how you feel and what your emotions are with this thing called diabetes because I know there's some ups and downs you probably experienced a couple of those huh mm -hmm. So what would you tell our viewers for somebody who might be in your same age category? Do you tell your friends? Do you not tell your friends? What do you do with this thing called diabetes? Um, do, do, do you incorporate everybody, even those that don't have diabetes, or do you kind of shut everybody out that doesn't have diabetes? Well, I, should, you, I think you should tell your friends that you have diabetes because it's an important thing. And like, it's to say like one day like you, something happens to you and like someone just looks at you crazy or like... Mm. So, so like yeah. So you just need to kind of let them know. Let them know what you have and what they. It's need not to a do. contagious yeah. illness. It's not cooking. You know. Yeah. And, and it's really, you know, it's, it, we call it a disease process, but it's, it's part of you. It's, it's your life. It's, yes. it's who, you, who you are going to be from now forward. And uh, if you take care of it, there's nothing about diabetes that should stop you yes. or hinder you in any fashion. What do you think about that? Um, I think about that. Um, that it's not going to stop you. Yeah, it's never going to stop me, no. That, I love me. that. It's <laughs> never going to stop, stop me. me. <laughs> Kayla says diabetes is never going to stop her. So, Mom, what would you like to convey to other moms out there? You know, we've heard things such as, I know the exact minute, day, the exact second, everything about when my child was diagnosed. I'm never going to forget that. What do you tell a parent who may be a, a parent of a newly diagnosed child with diabetes where you you were there three years ago what would you tell them what would you tell them that you've learned in three years that um, that's okay it's not the end of the world there is so much support out there and um, so much knowledge now it is so advanced from years ago there's so much out there to help you with this um, illness and um, that everything will be okay it wow. will be and what would you tell them if, if there's if there's a child out there or a, a, your, your peer out there that same age and they're just now being diagnosed either now at 14 or when you were at 11 what would you tell them I'll tell them that it would be okay don't stress over everything don't stress over that you have diabetes like that you know there's other people around you that will help you and so so they too they'll get this 
Yes. And they got it. Mm -hmm. And you got it? Yes, I do. <laughs> you got to take it on. Mm -hmm. Head you on. Own it <laughs> yes. and make sure it's taken on head on. And mom, what are you going to do? Take it head on, day by day. We have been so far and we've been doing great. And um, it's part of our routine now. Wow. It has been. It, I don't see it as something different now, you know. It did Like I said, it did change, but for better. Wow. You know, since obviously we heard your diabetes through your mom's eyes, what is there that you could tell your mom? Is there anything you would tell your mom that you want your mom to know that you've never really told her about your diabetes? Because sometimes it's good for her to hear it through her daughter's eyes. Is there anything, any thought, anything about your diabetes that you want your mom to know and that you don't mind sharing with the whole world? Well, I don't really have anything to tell her. I, like, I tell her everything. Like, I let her know, just like when my sugar's low, I let her know everything, so just, I'm just saying, like, thank you for, like, being there. <laughs> oh, that, actually, that that's, you, you say that once or twice too much, I'm going to end up with tears in my eyes here <laughs> in a second. But the, the truth is, I think that you guys got this. I mean, I remember when your mom had asked me three years ago. I would take this, pictures and show and you. She would she would show me your number, show me this, show me that. And she was like, Chris, what is this? Where, where are we going with this thing? And here you are three years forward. Yes. And, um, you know, you, you, guys did, you guys did it. Yes, we and, did. And you, it shows that diabetes, although diabetes is scary today, diabetes doesn't have to be that way. And diabetes is truly a can-do disease process. And I think with that being said, I, is there anything else you guys want to tell our viewers about your diabetes, about diabetes in general? There's help out there. Um, like I said, um, there's so much out there now. The technology has changed so much. You're not alone. I found Chris at work, his wife, and I've asked him questions, and I'll keep asking. Wow. And you know what? We're here. We're here for everybody, and that's really what, what taking diabeteshead.com really is about. It's truly, we're here for you. Kayla, anything, you, any last mm. words? Any words of wisdom <laughs> to anybody out there with diabetes? Um, just know that you're not alone. There's always someone there's, that's there for you. And don't just stress, like I'm always stressing, but just don't stress. You know there's someone near you that will help you with everything. Well, with that said, I think we've come to the end of this peer-to-peer -peer session. And truly, thank you guys very much for watching, and we hope to see you again on our next program. I'm Chris, and we're taking diabetes head-on for you. I'm Kayla, and I'm taking diabetes head-on for you. I'm Sylvia, and I'm taking diabetes head-on for you.